Previously, we have uh, tried to demonstrate the concepts of differential mode and common mode noise, and this time I hope to do a better job. So I have this set up to demonstrate the concepts of differential mode noise and common mode noise. And what is important, again, in this case, as you can see the setup already, we're going to use current probe and we're going to use the time domain measurement. Therefore, you can really see the direction of the current and understand, hopefully, the concept better. So, without further ado, let's have a look at the test setup. Here we have a battery, 12 volts, and here we have our DUT, which is a 12 volts to 5 volts buck converter. And of course, in between, we have a, a, a power wires. Here we have a 12 volts battery set uh, on the test ground plane. Okay, so I have a 12 volts battery and I have a test ground plane. You can actually ground the negative part to the test ground plane, but for this uh, setup, it doesn't really matter. And then we have our device on the test, DUT, which is a 12 volts to 5 volts buck converter. Okay, to do that, I can draw a simplified diagram, which has a input capacitor, two switching devices, a filter output, and then the resistor load. Okay, so that is my uh, DUT here. And as you can see, it's not connecting to the test ground plane, but rather sits on this insulation support. Okay, so I can draw an insulation support like this. And of course, between the two, we have wire connection. And this is just a standard uh, wire connection, which means I have uh, 12 volts, and I have a zero volts. Okay, and essentially what this circuit does is really the load requires energy and ha the energy has to come from the source. But how to achieve that? Well, we achieve it by switching these two devices on and off. And every time we switch on, we require energy delivered from the battery to the load. And when we switch off, that stops. But here's the problem, here's the problem. As energy moving from the source to the load, it's not a smooth transition, isn't it? Because first, the energy needs to be stored on this input capacitor. And the next goes to the inductor. And then next, this capacitor. And finally, arriving at this um, load. On top of that, this system is definitely not a balanced 50 ohm system. Remember the uh, conversation we had previously when we say if you have a source and if you have a source impedance of 50 ohm and you connect to a 50 ohm load by having a 50 ohm, often it's like a coaxial cable transmission line, then what happens is if you have a switch switching on and off, you don't have reflections because everything is terminated and energy can be delivered from one end to the other without uh, rounds of transportation. But of course, this is an ideal scenario and this nowhere near it uh, as this ideal uh, scenario. So as a result, energy would bounce forward and backwards, forward and backwards, as we understand as a reflection. And as a result, as we explained, you will start to see current going opposite directions, and this could be a few rounds. So this, is, this really caused the differential mode noise as we, we can see here. Now how to understand the common mode noise? Well, it's actually simple, because again, think about it. This is our 5 volts rail, okay? And this is the 12 volts rail. We, what, is, what, what is an electric field? An uh, electric field really is it's two different voltages, isn't it? It's two different voltage and you have two potentials. So having this thinking, between these five volts and this test ground plane, there must be some electric field. And where does this energy stored in this electric field? It's stored in a capacitor. It's stored in a capacitor. So let me draw a capacitor like this. 
So between the 5 volts through and test ground plane, I have this so-called parasitic capacitance, and this actually stores some energy. Being quite small, let's say hundreds of peak farads level parasitic capacitance, but it can still store energy, and we know the energy is C V squared. Okay, so in this case, V is 5 volts, C is 100 picofarad. You can, you can actually work out how, mu how much energy is stored in this parasitic capacitance. Now the, now the thing is, as you switch on and off these two devices, because you are not delivering energy in time from the source, these parasitic capacitors all of a sudden start to supply energy to the load as well, right? Because it can. And why not? It's, it's you know, small capacitance, it delivers energy extremely fast. It just stores a little um, energy. So as a result, you will see currents being charged and discharged on these parasitic capacitors. And the same applies between zero volts to the test ground plane. There will be some parasitic capacitance as well. To the extreme that we have another cable, coaxial cable, nearby, which is this one, there will also be capacitance between this coaxial cable and the 5 volts, and there will be capacitance, there will be energy dumping on the five uh, on the load as well via this parasitic capacitance. As a result, as a result, as you can see, we have current, which is again we call it displacement current, going through these parasitic capacitors. And here we have parasitic capacitance between the 12 volts and, and the ground as well, and this also stores energy. So as a result, as a result, now we started to see current going this way and returning on the test ground plane. Or the current could also return on this coaxial cable, because it can, right? And if you have current go this way, then you have you know, the forward current in this case would go on both 12 volts and 0 volts line. And the loop it forms, because we said current always needs to form a loop, is occupying this whole area. The loop area, in this case, we can try to draw it, is really this. This is the loop, isn't it? This is the common mode loop, and this is the common mode current. Okay. Hopefully this gives you the idea of what is a differential mode noise and what is a common mode noise, right? The next is we're going to see it. We're going to see it use this setup. And how do we see it, right? Again, we have a pair, a pair of matched uh, current probe, a pair of matched current probe, and we have a surface uh, current probe. So we're going to have the two probes, as you can see already, one probe is configured as a common mode current measurement because I'm measuring you know, in this way, so the common mode is measured. And next is this probe. You can see the way I configure it. I have one wire go this way and the, the other wire uh, having a loop. And this configuration really cancels out the common mode noise and instead I'm measuring two times of the differential mode noise. So this measuring two times of the differential mode noise and this measuring the common mode noise, okay? Or depends on how you see it, you could see two times of the common mode noise, okay? So here we have a common mode and differential mode noise measurement. And as we said, here we have a surface current probe. So if I put the probe here, I should be able to measure whatever the surface current traveling on the surface of the test ground plane. And we explained before that all these probes have has a direction. So if all the current is traveling the same direction, then I would expect the, the phase of this current measured and this phase current measured is, are the same. However, if they are opposite, that means we have current going one direction and then the other current measured going to the uh, going through the other direction. Okay, so that would tell us whether the a current going opposite direction or forward direction. And also we can actually work out the current level because we know the transfer impedance of these current probe sets and also the transfer impedance of this current probe set. So we can actually see whether the the amount of current measured are close enough. Are close enough. Okay, so knowing this, let's switch on uh, the 
oscilloscope and see if we can uh, see we, what we want to see. Okay. We switch on the oscilloscope. Now I'm going to switch on the device. So what we have here is we have channel one measuring the common mode noise. And uh, the pink really, if we touch it on the test ground plane, we will measure the surface current. And channel two is interesting because channel two has a very low frequency com uh, com content, which, which you can see 112 kilohertz. Okay, so that's our differential mode noise. You can see that the amplitude is quite high, but the frequency is quite low. Whereas the common mode, um, the amplitude is a lot lower than the differential mode, um, but it's higher frequency because if we stop, then um, you can actually zoom in this area, and then you can you can see it's high high frequency contents. Okay, um, but before we do that, before we do that. Um, you can see, you can see at this stage, everything is measured using a 50 ohm uh, input impedance to the scope, but they are all in volts. So the first thing we need to do is we need to put them into current. Okay, we need to put them into current. So how do we do that? Now, each probe has the what they call the transfer impedance. So let's do one by one. The surface current probe, if you look at the data sheet, you will find the transfer impedance is minus 5, minus 6 dB ohm. So if you do the math, it's about 0.5 ohm, 0.5 ohm across a certain frequency range. Because we're using this to measure that uh, higher band frequency, we, we can assume it's at 0.5 ohms. So if it's 0.5 ohms, and we read as a voltage, so we just need to divide it by 0.5, which means uh, two times as a, uh, as a ratio. So what I can do is I go to uh, set up here, and I first I select current, and then what I do is I'll select two times as a as a ratio, just a rough um, as a um, calculation. So that gives me the uh, current measurement in uh, in current rather than in voltage. Now we move to this. This, as we know, measures the common mode. Uh, current again is high frequency measurement. Uh, so here is the uh, data sheet of of this um, uh, current probe, and as you can see, from about one megahertz is a flat line, and it gives you about sixteen point something dB ohm. Okay, so if you change uh, from dB ohm to ohm, you can work out that the impedance is about six point something ohms. So that means whatever I measure using voltage, I divide it by six, roughly six. Um, so that means I have a ratio of 0 0.16, right? 0 0.16. So I can do that for this one. So I'll go to uh, this is actually my channel one. So I'll go to channel one, and I can select current, and I can do a ratio, user-defined ratio, 0 0.016, just as, again, as a very rough uh, calculation. Okay, so that gives me the current reading of uh, the common mode. Now, for differential mode, it's a little bit tricky, because as we see already, the differential mode measurements we measured here shows a 100-something kilohertz, right? Quite low frequency, but quite high um, uh, amplitude. So if we go, go to here, between 0.1 and 0.2, we have about 1.34 um, to 7 point something dB ohm. So that's uh, that's where it's really uh, changed the value. So um, yeah, if we can more or less just treat it as one, one ohm. Okay. Yeah, let's just leave as it is, but just change it into as a, uh, a current and put in one, one amp. It doesn't matter because uh, it's a differential mode noise. Actually, we're not going to use it for demonstration. We can actually uh, disable the differential mode noise just looking at the com uh, common mode noise. So we wanted to see if they are opposite direction, as we said, and if they are the same amplitude. So what, what do we do? We have the measurement here. So in order to see it better, I can lower it. Okay, so 8 milliamps at the moment. I can do the same. For this one, so I put them in the same level, so that's 10 milliamps, more or less the same. So now, as you can see, I have my uh, marking here, marking here. So if I put my probe here, 
then you can see more or less, more or less, they are similar amplitude, similar amplitudes. So let's stop them. Okay, so like I'll stop them right right now. Okay. And what I'll do is I will zoom in. So this is the zoom in version, right? One measured on on the probe on the wires, one measure on the surface. And as you can see, in terms of amplitude, they are very similar. But also interesting is they are completely out of phase, right? They are out of phase. That means the direction is opposite. The direction is opposite. That makes sense. That makes sense because, you know, we already explained this should be opposite direction between the surface current and, and, and the wire uh, current traveling on wires. And amplitude, they should be similar as well. So this beautifully demonstrates this. Now the next is to see if the current induced on this coax cable also has a similar amplitude and similar and, and opposite direction. So let's do that using this probe. So I can disengage this probe and I'll put it in here, okay? I can actually move this a little bit closer so that this is not actually on the test ground plane. So again, let's compare between this and this. Now, now I can change in this into the same. I'll do the current and I'll do the same ratio, which is 0.16, because now I'm measuring a much higher frequency uh, band. So it is uh, this uh, ratio, we already know, 0.16. Okay. So let's have a look. So I'm gonna start, okay, and yeah. so now I can disable this. So just compare trace one and trace two. Okay, here we still measure a very high level of current, but here we cannot measure a, 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 a big current level, right? So here we need to lower the current. To, to the next level. So here you can see most of the return current will use the test ground plane as we already know, but there will still be current using this wire, even though this wire has, is not connecting to anywhere, right? It still uses this wire and uh, you can see it. And let's just look at if they are the same face or opposite, okay? So let's have a look. They are opposite, right? They are out of the phase. Again, that means this wire will carry some return current, but at a much lower level, which makes sense. Okay, so hopefully this demonstrates the idea of uh, differential mode and the common mode noise. And I think the most interesting thing is any conductor nearby will see some common mode current, and it's just the level will be different, but uh, you can see that uh, the common mode noise also is the source of radiation. And I hope you like this video and uh, thank you very much.